What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Robbie G Show podcast. That's right. We are back, and it is January 12th. If today is your birthday, happy birthday, and also happy birthday to these celebrities who are celebrating today. Zayn Malik, pop singer, turns 31. Uh, My boss at Amazon, (laughs) Jeff Bezos, is 60 today. Uh, Let's see. Any other big ones? Yes. uh, One of my favorite... And Heroes of Radio, Howard Stern, turns 70 years old today. That's insane. Uh, Let's see who else. Rob Zombie turns 59, one of my favorite metal singers. Uh, Singer Amiri turns 44. Uh, Today would have been Kirstie Alley's birthday if she were still alive. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Dina Nicole Cortez from the Jersey Shore, one of my favorites. Uh, One of my favorite meatballs. She turns 37. Uh, let's see, Joe Frazier would have had a birthday today, and Big Dick Dudley, he was a wrestler, he would have had a birthday today also if it was his birthday, if he were alive. Uh, let's see, who else? I think that's pretty much all the big ones. Coach Fahara, of he's a TikTok star, he turns 59 today, so uh, those are the birthdays for today, January 12th. I hope everybody's having a great day. I hope if you're in the Midwest or in the North, you're enjoying this weather. We have a lot of snow. Uh, My kids just got off of their Zoom uh, school for the day because they got to stay home today because of the weather. It's pretty crazy out there. We got a lot to talk about today. A lot of sports news to talk about. A lot went on this week. We had coaches being fired. Uh, We have wild card playoffs so we got a lot let's get to it and start the conversations um i also have some stuff to talk about on the celebrity front uh we got tv shows coming back next week uh we've got the golden globe award winners and what happened to taylor swift at the golden globe awards we'll talk about that and of course aaron Rodgers being a douche like he always is so we got a lot to talk about let's get into it uh, my final nfl predictions for the nfl season went pretty good um you know i was over 59 or 50 percent uh last week i was 10 and 6 on my final predictions uh 160 and 111 so I was 59.4% for the entire NFL season. Not too shabby, if, if I ask myself, if I say it. Uh, but, you know, now we got the playoffs. I got less games to talk about, but we'll see how I do on the playoffs. So here we go. Here's what's going on this weekend. Super wild card weekend. Uh, it starts off tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, we've got the Texans and the Browns. I take the Texans in that one. Um, I really think that... Um, We're going to see the Texans get that playoff win. You know, I I think the kid is amazing. You know, nobody thought that the Texans were going to get a QB that was that good, that straight out. He's a generational talent. Um, Bryce Young was horrible this year, you know, and stuff. He came out, he was supposed to be the number one project. And what happened to him? The same thing that's going to happen to Caleb Williams. And I've got some choice words for him later on when we talk about the Bears, but uh, yeah, so I got the Texans winning in that game. Uh, The Dolphins and Chiefs on Saturday, I've got the Dolphins uh, losing to the Chiefs in that one. Obviously, it's Kansas City, lots of playoff experience. I think Mahomes is going to do what Mahomes does, and he will find a way to win that game. He's not losing in the wild card round. Um, And that's the Saturday games. There's two tomorrow. Uh, Sunday, we got three games on the docket. We have the Steelers and the Bills. Bills are going to win that. Just got the experience, um, you know, obviously of Josh Allen. Uh, so I think he beats Tua in that game, and they win. Uh, let's see. We've got the Packers and the Cowboys Sunday afternoon. I think the Cowboys win that one. I don't think Jordan Love is ready. He did have an amazing season, but he's just not ready for those playoff wins yet, in my opinion. And Dak has been there before in the playoffs. I think that they win. Um, And then the final game of the night is going to be the Rams and the Lions. Matthew Stafford returning back home to Detroit. And Jared Goff playing his former team that traded him for Matthew Stafford. Um, I think that the Lions do win this game, though. I think the Lions are ready. And I projected the Lions to win the Super Bowl. In my picks, I I think the Lions are ready and they're there, and it's gonna happen. 
I'm excited. We'll see what happens. But yeah, the Lions are definitely going to win that game against the Rams at home. Uh, Monday is the last game, and that's going to be the Eagles and the Bucks. I think the Eagles are going to win, even though they've been struggling this year. It's still the playoffs. Jalen Hurts has the Super Bowl experience. I think they win that game. So I took the Eagles in that one. Uh, bye week for the week is the 49ers for the NFC, and the AFC is the Baltimore Ravens. They'll play their games next week. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, I think that you know a lot of people are expecting the Eagles to lose. I don't think they will. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, you know the the wild card is crazy because at that point anybody can win. Anyone can beat anybody, and I want to see what happens with that. I'm excited for the weekend. I think it's going to be a great weekend full of football. And uh, we'll see who goes on to the Divisional Series next weekend. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Wild Card Playoffs and who do I think is going to be the biggest exit upset of the entire Wild Card Weekend this weekend. I think everybody's assuming the Packers are going to win because it's Green Bay. And you went from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers and now to Jordan Love. Jordan Love, I don't feel, is fully there yet, and I don't see them getting past the Cowboys. I don't see the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl ever, but they are the team that will upset teams and make it into, you know, the divisional round or even the NFC Championship game and then lose. I can't predict where the uh, Cowboys are going to go in the next round because I don't really know yet. It depends on um, who else wins during the weekend so we'll see what happens there but yes i do think that the wild card is going to be a great weekend of football and i think the the packers lose the lion or to the uh packers are gonna lose i would love to see the packers and the lions in the first round that would have been an awesome matchup and then i might say well maybe jordan love can beat you know golf or something but i just can't see him beating Dak. And C.D. Lamb, I mean, come on, that dude was my fantasy football hero. Him, D.J. Moore, and even Justin Fields, they were my heroes, believe it or not. And C.D. Lamb was amazing. That dude averaged me like 24 points a game every single week. It was amazing, and sometimes way more, just depending on the week he had. But yeah, C.D. Lamb, Dak Prescott, they're going to go a little further into the playoffs. They'll get past the wild card, past the Packers, and then we'll see after that where they go. Divisional round, maybe they'll win and go to the NFC Championship. Maybe this year will be the Cowboys' year. Who knows? One of these years, it could happen. People always make fun of them being the lovable losers, but maybe, just maybe, we will finally see the Cowboys win a championship. Uh, Let's see. So uh, let's talk about the NCAA really quick. Uh, Because I ended up going, let's see... 21 and 22 in the bowl games for 48.8%. Not a good percentage, but I did end up doing okay. My Michigan Wolverines are the champions. Jim Harbaugh is staying in Michigan. Not confirmed. I didn't confirm it. I'm just saying, in my heart, I think he stays with Michigan. Everybody wants him to go to the pros, but let's be honest. He has it made. He is the king of college football right now. Nick Saban retired from Alabama. Guess who's next in line, in my eyes? It would be Jim Harbaugh. He just took us to a national championship and won. He could easily go for two straight next year. I know J.J. McCarthy is going to go into the NFL draft. He's going to go to the NFL. The team will look different. But then again, you know what? A good coach can take anybody and make it happen. And that's what I feel. I feel that's what Jim Harbaugh can do. So, yes, I think Jim Harbaugh goes on next year in Michigan and wins two straight. I honestly, he could go to the NFL. There's a lot of teams that would want him. But at the same time, he is different than his brother. John Harbaugh is the NFL guy that takes his team to the Super Bowl and wins it. Now, Jim Harbaugh is the college man that takes his college team to the national championship and wins it. Let them be separate. 
let them be separated. He doesn't have to win a Super Bowl to be any better or worse than his brother, okay? They're both, in my eyes, two of the greatest coaches in football, along with their dad. So let him stay in college and have fun with that. But yeah, my college bowl predictions didn't go the way I wanted them to. But then again, it's so weird because, you know, upsets happen in the NFL, but more upsets happen during college football. I feel college football has a lot more upsets. But next year, just for fun, we're going to do NCAA um, week by week like we do for the NFL. And then, the, of course, the Bulls and then the National Championship. But, yeah, next year we're going to have some fun with it. I'm going to do what I did for the NFL this year. And I'm going to make my predictions every single week and see where we're at. See how I do for an entire season. For the Bulls, I did 48%. It's not horrible. Uh, for the NFL, I did... 58 or 59 percent that's actually pretty decent anything over 50 percent is pretty good in guessing especially since everyone knows sports can go 50 50 every time you could say you got it or you didn't uh, my fantasy team did seven and seven this year which was a step up because last year i was like a two i believe a two game winner last year so to go from two wins up to seven this year uh, picked a better team, less injuries than I had last year, so I end up doing a lot better. But yeah, uh, a little bit of Blackhawks news. Uh, Connor Bedard is out for six to eight weeks. He just had surgery on his jaw. Really sad. He will miss the All-Star game, which is in the beginning of February. Um, but to be a rookie and get to be in the All-Star game is amazing. And I hope he has a speedy recovery because it's really, really sad. Uh, when a guy was able to do what he's done in the first half of the season and then gets struck with an injury. But I watched the tape of the hit, and I honestly, I don't think it was a um, dirty hit. I think it was just a hockey hit. He just came at him, and he hit him. I, I mean, what else can you do? You know, it's hockey. It's a violent sport. It's just like football. Guys get hurt. Not everything's a dirty shot. Um, I get they're trying to protect players more in sports now, but at the same time, you can't protect them from everything. Uh, right now, the Chicago Blackhawks, I'm looking up Connor Bedard's stats uh, since we know he's going to be out past the All-Star break, which was the halfway point. So at the halfway point of the season, you know, he's had some really good games. He's got some really good stats. Here, let's see, I'm going on to my ESPN now. So right now, he has 15 goals, 18 assists for 33 points. That is amazing numbers for a rookie. Especially since he did kind of struggle at the first couple games of the season and people were a little worried, like maybe he's not this phenomenon that everybody thought he was going to be. But he's turning into that phenomenon. And he's going to be the next Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves. If we can get him one more young rookie this year because the Blackhawks look at their their standings right now they're not good okay they're 12 28 and 2 uh, right now if you look at their standings let's see let's go to NHL standings and see where they're at right now because honestly I mean the all-star break is literally in a couple weeks um, let's see NHL standings so right now in the west the Hawks are last place in the Central Division um, with 12 wins. And I'm looking at the entire thing right now. They got 12 wins. The Blue Jackets have 13 wins. Well, actually, you look at points. So the Blue Jackets have 35 points. The Senators have 28 points. That's in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Blackhawks have 26 points and the Sharks have 23. So right now we're the second worst team in the NHL, which means that we could end up with the number one pick again, number one or number two. And with that, you can get a good player to go along with Connor Bernard, and I hope it happens. Um, I have Bulls talk on the list, um, but honestly, right now, I mean, they're, they're doing good. They're doing a lot better. Um, I'm proud of the way they're playing. They beat Houston the other night. Tonight they have a matchup with the uh, Golden State Warriors, and I think that's going to be a good game. Right now the Bulls are right where they need to be in the Eastern Conference. They're number nine. So right now they would be in the play-in tournament 
uh, the, the 7, 8, 9, and 10 play each other in that. So, yeah, they will actually be in the play-in tournament as of now at 18 and 21. Um, they still have a lot of season left. Their all-star break is until, like, the middle of February. They still have a lot of games to go. Uh, they're only, what, 39 games in in an 82-game season. They got a long time to go. The best team in the Eastern Conference right now is the Boston Celtics at 29-9. and nine. So, I mean, I'm not saying we have a chance necessarily to catch them, but we could catch fire. Um, but I think we could end up somewhere in the top 10 to make the play-in tournament. I think that could happen, so we'll see. Uh, Bulls are playing better, even with Zach Levine back. Zach Levine actually kind of surprised me. He kind of looked like a guy who's wanting to play some team ball. Maybe he was watching as he was out. I'd say and maybe if I'm more of a team player, the fans will love me again and we'll all play good together and i'll just stick with the bulls for the year who knows where he's going to go next year um you know he's not up yet on his contract but you know maybe if he struggles maybe his contract comes down a little more then maybe he goes somewhere else we'll have to see um but yeah so i think the bulls are in a good area i'm proud of them the hawks just where I want them to be. You don't want them to be a superstar team yet. You want them to get one more good draft pick so they get a Taves and Kane with Bedard. That would be amazing. If you can get a, a Taves and Kane situation going with Bedard and another rookie, we're set. That's another Stanley Cup. So it's about the long game. It's not the short game. And this is what people need to understand in football too. It's not about the long game or the short game. It's about the long game. Because you need to be good for many years. You don't want to just be good for one year and one year only. Uh, Chicago Bears fired Luke Getze. And we were wanting it for so long. And it finally happened. I'm happy about that. Um, I'm excited. I think that the Bears are going to be a lot better of a team without him. I think if we can get a competent coordinator, um, it's not going to matter who our quarterback is because they will help them play a lot better if we get a competent offensive coordinator. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, as for Caleb Williams, if this is true what I read today, that he is holding out on declaring for the draft, he has till the 15th, which today is, what, the 12th? So he has till Monday to declare for the NFL draft. According to his camp, now, I don't know how true this is, but I've heard rumors way before this. He wants a guarantee from the Bears that they're going to trade that number one pick to somebody else so he doesn't have to play in Chicago. If that's the truth, F him. He could stay in college. And I wouldn't even tell him what we're going to do with that number one pick. Whether we're going to use it on another quarterback or we're going to trade it, I wouldn't tell him nothing. You are not owed anything, kid. You couldn't even have a good season in your last year at USC. So you know what? You could stay for your senior year there. This was supposed to be his last year. He was supposed to have a great season, win the Heisman, play in a bowl, win the bowl, and then go on and set himself into the sunset into the NFL number one draft pick. He was supposed to have a phenomenal season, and he played like garbage. He cried in his mom's arms. He's not a real man. This kid needs to go. Let him stay in the NCAA for a senior year, and I hope he gets an injury there because he's a piece of garbage. Nobody is above anybody when you're a rookie. I don't care who you are. I don't care what kind of player you are. You have no right to call any shots for any team. If you get drafted to the Bears, you play your heart out for the Bears. I don't care if you don't like them or not. But you know what? If I'm the Bears, I'm telling them, you know what? Declare for the draft because we're not taking you. So you will not be the number one draft pick. We'll take, if we're going to move on from Justin, we'll take Drake May. If we're going to move on from Justin and we don't want Drake May, we'll take Michael Penix Jr. At least he's a proven winner that made it to the national championship. He didn't win it, but he made it there against Michigan. And he played with heart, he played with an injury. He looked good out there, even hurt. He looked good out there. Better than you, Caleb. Better than you. You're a piece of garbage. If that's how you feel about a playing for a team, this is what happens. You want to be the number one draft pick, you go to the number one team, whoever that team is. 
You're not going to the Cowboys. You're not going to the Packers. You're not going to any of those playoff teams. The whole point of being a rookie is you play on the worst team. And the Bears aren't even the worst team. The Bears got it because of the worst team. Because of a stupid trade they made to get Bryce Young. And where did they get the Panthers? The worst record in the NFL, and they don't even get the number one draft pick. That's just terrible. But that's okay. Bears don't need, they don't need him. They don't need Caleb Williams. He could stay in college and play another year there, or he can go somewhere else. If the Bears are going to trade that for a ransom, cool, trade it for a ransom. And let him go to Washington, or New England, or Atlanta. My thing is to keep Justin Fields one more year. Build that offense around Fields, and if he doesn't play up to par with a better roster and a better offensive coordinator, then next year you're going to probably end up with a top 10 pick if he's that bad anyway. We'll draft a quarterback next year because this crop of quarterbacks to me isn't worth much anyway. Michael Penix Jr., J.J. McCarthy. You know, I love J.J. He plays for my team. He got us a national championship, but at the same time, he's not a game changer in the NFL. Michael Penix Jr., probably not a game changer in the NFL. Drake May, possibly a game changer, but I don't know. And Caleb Williams with his attitude, no. He ain't shit, and I don't want him. Excuse my language, but I do not want him here. So no, if I'm the Bears, I'm trading it, and I'm I'm getting Marvin Harrison Jr., a proven wide receiver that can be a number one or a number two with DJ Moore and give Justin Fields another big body to throw to. Maybe I draft a quarterback in the second round. Maybe J.J. McCarthy's still in the second round. You draft him as a backup. You make him sit a couple years, see what Fields does. If Fields does good and he becomes your franchise quarterback, you trade McCarthy somewhere else. That's what I would do. Bill Belichick getting fired or getting let go from the Patriots. Record with the Patriots, 296 and 133 losses over 24 seasons. Amazing. That includes the playoffs. Six-time champion, but he proved that Tom Brady was the reason why he was winning games and winning championships. Because as soon as Tom Brady left, Brady went and won a ring in Tampa, and Bill Belichick was just awful every year. Mac Jones, none of them could do anything for him. Yeah, so I'm not surprised that he's gone. Um, You know, there's a lot of guys who got fired this week. Seattle Seahawks let go of Pete Carroll. He was 137, 89, and 1 over 14 seasons. It's pretty decent. Um, Let's see who else. Washington Commanders fired Ron Rivera, former Bears defensive coordinator. Would have been bringing him back in Chicago, but he's probably going to want a head coaching job. He was 26 and 40 and 1 over four seasons with Washington. So uh, let's see. Mike Vrabel was fired from Tennessee. He was 54 and 45 over six seasons with them. He had a winning record, he had more wins than losses, and they still let him go. That's what NFL teams do on Black Monday. And Atlanta Falcons were the first ones to do it. Uh, fired Arthur Smith, who was 21-30 and 30 over three seasons. So those are the main ones. Um, Brandon Stanley was fired. He was 24-24 and 24 with the Chargers. That's not a good way. That is not a good record to have. And uh, Carolina Panthers fired Frank Rink. And his lone season was 1-10. Wow. <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders fired Josh McDaniels, 9-16 and 16 over two seasons. And let's see. Chicago Bears fired offensive coordinator Luke Getze. New York Giants uh, former defensive coordinator Wink Martindale is no longer employed with them. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars got rid of their now former defensive coordinator. Uh, Mike Caldwell, Washington Commanders, fired their defensive coordinator, Jack Del Rio. But that was in November. And then Pittsburgh Steelers got rid of their offensive coordinator, Mike uh, Matt Canada, in November also. So a lot of people left, and uh, there's a lot of coaching jobs. 
I'm not going to go over a list this week of who I want for my offensive coordinator. If they don't hire somebody by next week, we'll do it on next week's show. Um, but that's it for sports. Oh, you know what? One more thing I want to talk about sports-wise. I put in my uh, other section, but Aaron Rodgers, he, he, he's a complete douche. This dude just needs to retire from the NFL and just go away. Just go away, Aaron. Take your one little ring, get in the Hall of Fame, and just get the hell out of here. Nobody cares about your opinions on Jimmy Kimmel on a show that's about freaking sports. And the fact, and don't get me wrong, okay, I love, um, what's his name? I can't even think of his name right now because I'm so mad at Aaron Rodgers. But the thing is, you don't go on a sports show and talk about a list, okay? It's the dumbest thing. This is a news world. This this wasn't a news show. Okay? I mean, this is stupid. And Aaron Rodgers is just the dumbest guy I've ever met in my life. And I would never interview him because I would end up roasting him. Um, Jimmy Kimmel... You know, you can say what you want about him. I'm not the biggest fan of Jimmy Kimmel. I really don't like him that much. But let, let's just put it this way. I would not go on Pat McAfee's show and talk about the list. And that should have never came up. And Pat McAfee, if he brought up the comment, I didn't see the show live, so I don't know who started the conversation. But let's be honest. That did not belong on your show, Pat McAfee. Okay? It didn't. And the fact that it came up and then he put Kimmel's name out there like that, Aaron Rodgers is just a complete loser. And he's always been a loser. I can't stand the guy. Like, I get it. You people in Green Bay love him because you took him to a division every single year. And a division with the Bears, the Vikings, and the Lions. Nothing to ride home about. Okay? You're in one of the shittiest divisions in football. You should be able to win it every year. Okay? The fact that Jordan Love couldn't win it shows that he may not be as good as Aaron Rodgers. Because if he was, he would have won the he would have won that division. Lions are on the come up. Bears are on the come up. The Vikings and Packers, I think, are going to be like two and three or three and four for a long time. I think that I'm hoping Jordan Love enjoyed the season in the playoffs because I don't think it's going to happen next year. I think it's going to be the Bears and the Lions going to the playoffs. But yeah, we're going to move on now. We're going to talk about the Golden Globe winners. All right, so here's the full list of the winners um, from the Golden Globes, which was last Sunday night. Very exciting. Uh, Best performance by an actress in a supporting role in a motion picture went to Divine Joy Randolph uh, for The Holdovers. Uh, Best performance by an actor in a supporting role in any motion picture was Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Uh, let's see, best performance by an actress in a limited series, anthology series, or motion picture made for television went to Ali Wong for Beef. Uh, best performance by an actor in a limited series, anthology series, or motion picture made for television was Stephen Young for Beef. It was a good show. Uh, best performance by an actress in a supporting role in a television series went to Elizabeth DeBecky, The Crown. Uh, best performance by an actor in a supporting role in the television series went to Matthew McFadden for Succession. Uh, best screenplay for a motion picture went to Julian Treift and Arthur Hardy for Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, they won that one. Uh, best performance by an actor in a television series, musical, or comedy went to Jeremy Allen White, The Bear. Uh, best performance in stand-up comedy on television went to Ricky Gervais for Armageddon. Best motion picture, non-English language, was Anatomy of a Fall, which was France, and that was the winner for that. Uh, Best performance by an actress in a television series, musical, or comedy was Ayo Arbery in The Bear. I need to watch this Bear in Succession. These things won a lot of awards. Uh, Best performance by an actor in a television series, drama, was Kieran Culkin for Succession. There were three of them up for that award, for Best Actor in that. Wow. Wow. Uh, Best Motion Picture Animated was The Boy and the Heroine. Uh, Let's see. Best Director for a Motion Picture, Christopher Nolan and Oppenheimer. I need to see that, too. Uh, Best Performance by an Actress in a Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy, Emma Stone for Poor Things. Love Emma Stone. Glad she won. But I would have took Margot Robbie for Barbie in that one, too. Still haven't seen that, but I think that this was a pretty stacked... um, 
uh, award because you had Emma Stone, Margot Robbie, Natalie Portman, Fantasia Barino, Jennifer Lawrence, and Alma Poistiki. I don't know who she is, but a uh, pretty decent list of actresses in that one. Uh, best performance by an actor in a motion picture drama, Cillian Murphy for Oppenheimer. Best original score was Ludwig Gordeson for Oppenheimer. Man, that movie, I need to see it. Uh, best original song in a motion picture was What I Was Made For by Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell from Barbie. Uh, cinematic and box office achievement, Barbie was the winner there. Best television limited series, anthology series, or motion picture made for television was Beef. Uh, best television series was The Bear. Best performance by an actress in a television series drama went to Sarah Snook in Succession. Need to see that show. Best television series drama was Succession, and that was up against The Last of Us, The Crown, The Morning Show, The Diplomat, and 1923. Uh, best performance by an actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy was Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers. Best motion picture, musical, or comedy was Poor Things. Man, they beat out Barbie. Wow. Uh, best performance by an actress in a motion picture drama was Lily Gladstone in Killers of the Flower Moon. And Best Motion Picture Drama went to Oppenheimer. So those were the winners of the Golden Globe Awards. That's a pretty decent list of winners right there. Uh, definitely got to see Oppenheimer. And I'm thinking about starting that show Succession. Because <laughs> that sounds like a really good thing too. Um, <laughs> two more things I want to talk about before I leave here. Uh, Joe Coy was the host of the Golden Globe Awards. And I guess he made a comment about Taylor Swift. And after she lost her, her category, which she was in the category for uh, her concert uh, movie that was out, she lost in that category and she left right after because he made a comment. And I want to quote this exactly. What did Joy Joe Coy say to Taylor Swift? <laughs> he said there was no Ill, Ill intent. Uh, but let's see, what did he say? I didn't see the show as I was at work. It was a Sunday night. Uh, let's see. He's clearing the air surrounding the Golden Globes. Joe Coy's joke at the award ceremony centered around how often the NFL's cameras cut to reaction shots of the singer when she attends boyfriend Travis Kelsey's games. This is what he said. The big difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL? At the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift. The camera joked as camera. The comic joked as cameras naturally cut to Swift, who reacted with pursed lips before casually sipping from her champagne flute. He said, "I didn't understand the Taylor tiff. Uh, mind you, that one was getting rewritten 50 million times. Never ran it through all the way up until we had to walk out. It's just weird. Where do we place it? And we kept hammering it and cutting it down. But the whole intention of the joke was to make fun of the NFL." He continues, it's like the cool thing about the Globes is we don't need to do cutaways for ratings. What hurts the most is me just supporting Taylor. I support her. I love her work. I got nieces that I bought tickets for. There's no ill intent in that joke. The joke is about the NFL and how they keep using cutaways to her. And it's an obvious reason why. I'm not saying anything that no one's saying. And it's obvious what that joke was. It's about the NFL. Coy concluded, it's like out of everything that has happened, this is the one you choose to go after. I didn't understand why, because it was fun when I walked out. Um, Robert De Niro was dying, like, I'm <laughs> looking at him and his wife was smacking his back and smiling and laughing, and he was laughing. And when I did the whole thing about him being 80, he loved it. And that was fun. I was like, man, this guy's so much fun. And then I did that Swift joke, and I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> So, I mean, honestly, Taylor Swift just seems way too uptight. I love Taylor. I love her music. But honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal. And it's true. The NFL does cut away to her all the time. All the time. Why do we have to see Taylor 20 times a game? Shouldn't we be focusing on what's there, the football game? Yeah, she took that way too serious. I mean, I just didn't see the big deal with that. Um, but that's just me, and I like to joke around. So for me, that was a joke. It was funny. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens with that whole thing. Hopefully him and Taylor don't have beef going on after this. Hopefully she don't put him in a song. You better watch out, Joy, Joe Coy. She might put you in a song later. You might be the star of her next album. 
you know what? That's all publicity. So I wouldn't actually care. If Taylor Swift made a joke about Robbie G's little podcast that probably gets like 20 listeners every week, <laughs> it, it wouldn't bother me. So yeah, let's turn this into thousands so maybe Taylor Swift will hear it and she'll put me in a song. Um, maybe I'll be the next Taylor Swift after Travis Kelsey. But yeah, so let's go on to the last thing. TV show returns. Uh, this week is going to be a big week for... NBC as the Chicago shows return, and so does Lieutenant Severide. And I'm excited. Taylor Kinney is coming back to Chicago Fire this week, um, or the next week coming up, and I'm excited for that. I want to see where that storyline goes with him and Stella Kid. I want to see with Sylvie leaving the show if that if she's going to go with Casey and Miriam or who knows what's going to happen. A few other people are leaving the Chicago shows between Med, Fire, and uh, Chicago PD, so we'll see what happens there. Thursday night is another big night for NBC because more Dick Wolf shows are going to be on. They're going to have Law & Order, Law & Order SVU, and Law & Order Criminal Intent coming back Thursday night. That's going to be fun. So next week, a lot of big returns. Uh, we'll talk about that next week. And then, of course, next week we're also going to talk about the Royal Rumble. Because that is the week of the Royal Rumble. That's right. We are less than two weeks away from the Rumble. I believe, wait, am I wrong? Hang on. Let me see. We are on the 15th right now. Let me see, because I might be wrong about that. It might be the week after that. So I'll be talking about the week after that. But yeah, WWE Royal Rumble is around the corner, but I think we have a couple more weeks. Let me see. Yeah, I was wrong. It's the 27th, so this weekend's the 13th. Next week's the 20th and the 27th, so we still got a couple more weeks. So next week we won't be talking about the Royal Rumble. We'll talk about it the week after that. We'll go through the list of matches, who I think is going to be in the Royal Rumble, who I think might win the Royal Rumble. Uh, will The Rock show up at the Royal Rumble? We have a lot to talk about with that. Um, but, yeah, so I'll be back next week with more sports talk. We'll find out who's in the divisional playoffs. We'll see how I did on my picks for this week. Then we'll have fun. But everybody, enjoy the snow. Go outside. Play. It's Martin Luther King weekend. A lot of schools are closed Monday for the three-day weekend. Uh, next week is supposed to be really, really cold if you're in the Chicagoland area. Uh, we're supposed to have, like, highs in the like single digits like two three degrees four degrees from sunday all the way till tuesday those three days are going to be really cold so make sure that you stay warm listen to some of my old shows um i'm going to post some youtube shows some uh my radio shows that were on youtube let people listen to those we're going to try to get the youtube channel going uh, i'm going to try to get my tiktok channel up more i'm getting close to at 1700 so i'm getting close to 2000 uh come and follow me on all the social media you can email me all that information is going to be below um at the bottom of the uh, thing where you see what the show's about all that's going to be there so come follow me on facebook x instagram follow me on tiktok and you can email me too uh so i'll see everybody next week hey charlie you want to come and say your line Charlie's here because it's a day off from school. Well, he had home learning so, today. He had, what do they call it, remote, remote, remote learning? learning? Yeah. Yeah, he did remote learning today because of the snow. Uh, so, yeah, everybody, I'll see you next week. Follow me on all the social media and come listen every week to the new shows. Every single Friday, you'll hear a brand new show. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and... Don't die and play with Legos. <laughs> Minifix says bye. All right, we'll see everybody next week. Minifix says bye.